Okay? So I do all those things in the first section, work out, and I don't do it anymore. What happened is, once when the woman realized what is hypnosis, and they feel so good, relax, they go home, as you know, people have been in deep trance of hypnosis, they have a great night of sleep, they feel great, they feel such a peaceful, harmonic, and a nice situation that uh, they feel so good, so good, that they want to be there before. Um, and again, they want to be there again. So in the next session, when I bring it for the next session, in one week or two weeks, I have time, but usually one week, then we start doing the real process of the of the world chapter of hypnosis. In the second session, what I do, because I have already that quick induction ready, you should talk, you don't have to go through the whole long induction, I just touch it, the forehead, come down into hypnosis. It's in actually practically, you have a good, good induction before, and you have that mind into hypnosis, you don't have to have to do much of the deepening either. Like when you do a quick induction, you have to start deepening. Because with very little, you will see, touch it right there, and you go. Okay, here as you see, and the, and the monitor, um, I was, I know because you were looking at me, I don't know if you were looking at the monitor. So I said, let me see if you can put it back. What I did is the woman is, is stick a needle right and the forearm to the point, you will see the blood will come out. Okay? I don't know if it's the, I guess we can say. It's a needle, a regular needle that they use for to draw blood. Okay? And you see the blood right there, those points. And I want to stick it not a single movement. To the point, it's something that we can explain very well, especially the anesthetist when I, my anesthesiologist, I, I show this kind of situation. Uh, the forearm will be no anesthetized. So when you, you touch the forearm, it hurts. Or the arm or the hand also uh, it can be uh, non anesthetized. What I mean is the hand is going to be sensible, the arm is going to be sensible, and the forearm completely exercise it off. How do you explain that physically? Because once, when you do this kind of thing, you have to, you know, with an regular anesthesia, with a block, the whole arm will be numb. Okay, when you do the, the block here, the forearm and the hand will be numb. This one is just partial. It's something which is physically uncomprehensible of the knowledge we have. Why? Because the whole block is done to the cerebral head. <coughs> right? So in the second session, I do a, and I can see now that I, I went already very late. No, so Okay, I got to go to those very, very, very quick. Right? Um, <coughs> what I do is I do a quick induction, then I deepen it of, uh, of the eyes open and I close. Uh, then I do, you hear how I end with this uh, induction. One very thing very important during the labor is the women really uh, are afraid of labor. Many women are afraid of labor. Because all the problems they have from the beginning they have been educated like a, you have child with pain. The Bible said that. So that is how this like discourse. They hear very bad tales from the mother, or I hear somebody had this. Uh, so when they come to the to the labor room, they are afraid. Okay? And the first thing that you have to do, okay, is remove the fear and the tension syndrome and make the fa uh, believe, and they will believe. Okay, that the childbirth will be the happiest day. It will be a good experience. So you have to put that in mind. From now on, you don't have to be fear, happy anymore, you have to be afraid anymore, because it's going to be the happiest day in your life to have today. Okay? And also very important to change the semantics. Semantics are very important. If you go to a doctor, you want to have a baby, I don't know who, how many, how many have a baby here, okay? The first thing, the physical doctor will tell you, okay, 
Call me when you have pain every three minutes. Could you imagine problem in mind when you have pain? You already are talking, and everybody knows what, what pain is all about. Call me when you have pain every three minutes. You should start like that. Had to be changed. And what I propose is call me when you have contractions every three minutes. Make a big, big difference in the mind. And the mind is programmed that way. Okay? It's ridiculous to call a labor room. It's like labor, hard labor. So <laughs> instead of calling Charlton Street or, or, or Childbirth Room, okay? And um, and these semantics are very important to be uh, this field to be removed, okay? There are contractions and there are hard contractions, little contractions, but there are contractions. That's all what they have. Then you have to explain the, uh, their contraction, right? They are uh, no labor, like rest of his contraction. All those processes, you can explain it during hypnosis. So the whole information is right there in the subconscious mind, completely embedded in the subconscious mind. Uh, uh, and the subconscious mind. What I do also in the first uh, and the second visit, I explain what is the birth canal, the muscles, the perineal, how it works, how the head rotates and the different stage of the birth. They have, the children have three stages. First stage, until they have contraction, the full dilatation. Second stage, which is from the dilatation to the expulsion. The third stage, after the expulsion of the baby, the, the removal or expulsion of the placenta. So there are three stages. What is very good about this type of hypnosis, when you have this type of analgesia, is that you can prepare even a physiology or test if you need it without anesthesia, even local anesthesia. Some of the Thing that we have here, I demonstrate how the local anesthesia, or how the physiology works. Very difficult. We don't have so much of the time, so I'm trying to rush. Okay. All right. Um, also, and you prepare a woman to accept, a woman that are breathing to have, right after the process, a good, a good and quick coagulation and stop the bleeding. One of the important things that you can do in the is you can program and they say, you are going not to bleed, you want to have muscle constriction so you don't bleed so much, and then that happens. It's amazing how, even as a matter of fact, what you see right there in those stickers, in the, those stickers in, in, in the forearm, how I said, okay, it's going to stop bleeding, and stop bleeding. Actually, the body bleeds in six minutes, is the time, the population time. Okay. So what would you do to emphasize? Reinforce the natural mechanisms. They are there, and they have to use it. They, and the um, the third session, okay. And you have him. Uh, he has seen. In the third session, you do a quick induction again, okay? deepening, create somnambulism, create anesthesia in the arm, in the abdomen, stick your needles. When you, got, when you get anesthesia in the arm like you see, I, I went to in there. What I tell the patient is, okay, this is anesthetized. Okay, you don't to feel the touching, but you don't to feel any discomfort. Even I don't even say pain. You want to have, you have to be comfortable. You don't have any discomfort. But they know what the pain is. So the process that is for pain, okay, with uncomfortable, uncomfortable sensation in the brain. Then I transfer from the forearm to the belly too, okay? And I do the same thing in the belly, and I stick needles in the belly. I do that, of course, I, maybe you don't want to do that, you don't have the blood, but you can use a pinching mechanism, tweezers, and like that, the pinch that hurts, that hurts, right? With the same type of uh, uh, results. When I do it here, also, for, for demonstration purposes, it's like I said, very dramatic because they say, well, if you pinch it, you are not pinching, but for demonstration, you can see the blood is coming out, so it's something serious, right? You just keep it, okay? All right. So, I do that. Then I can station the abdomen when the uterine contraction happens, okay? Then I, this one of the techniques uh, to remove the pain, the anesthesia, doing um, a switch, the switch light. Which is very interesting. I don't know, and they, for the <laughs> dentist, the idea is to tell the patient, 
okay, now imagine you have your brain, and from your brain comes the spine, and all those cords, all those nerves, they come like cables down to the spine. Now, after the brain, you have a switch. And that switch, imagine the switch, when you put the switch down, the cut is like to cut off the light, they cut all the sensations, and so you don't have to feel any discomfort anymore. The dentist, I don't know, the switch is behind the face, in the hospital, but you can do the same thing. Imagine that those, uh, when they're giving you anesthesia, you can say that they are infiltrated with the okay, and they will have the numbers. Okay. And they know that, but, but they don't want to have all the other effects, they have the anesthesia, the swelling, and, and even sometimes uh, reactions, tachycardia, depends on the type of anesthesia you use. They will I use also is, um, Imagine that you are walking in a cold lake with a very cold water. As you are walking down, you have numbness from the legs, you have numbness in your belly. And I suggest you have numbness from the uh, level of the, uh, of the nipples to the middle of the thighs. That's the way they will have the anesthesia. And imagine that they are walking on a lake and they will feel that numbness in the, in, in the thighs. And the nipples are like when you have an epidural, the lower epidural. But it's like, why do you have like an epidural? You can say that too. Uh, and then in the third session, also, I, I bring the husband, and the husband can trans well, transfer, I transfer the power to the husband because the hypnosis is you know, the patient what he's doing. It. I'm not doing what the husband doing. But imagine now that I touch it, it's going to disappear. All the pains and everything. It is right here, you see the husband? Right here, look to come, touch it, and then he goes into hypnosis. This is the complete relaxation, right? Um, and I explain how to have to relax during the time of the, uh, of the contraction. So, and then finally, the fourth session, again, I do quick induction, deepening, creation of sonambulism, anesthesia. I practice more anesthesia with hypnosis. I do self-hypnosis practice, the patient can go home, and, and do the switch and relax at home and, and feel great. And again, we practice the husband interaction and we review all the childhood and stage. So they really, after all those things, the patient is ready for, for childhood. And here, I was uh, showing you this. And, in, and please, you give me five more minutes. Let me see if we can get here. Here is the husband. And that's with the arm anesthesia. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and put this. this Okay, so you really see what the dream, the dream of every husband. <laughs> <laughs> I said, where was this? Is, this is great because the husband, I cannot be there, and especially now. At, at that time, I was there, my, practically with all my deliveries. <coughs> the most important thing is if the patient uh, breaks the, uh, the concentration, so the husband is not good, and the doctor is not there, to panic and forget about it. <coughs> Sometimes it doesn't work because it's. You are there, of course, in But, and, and, and I'm sorry because we don't have all, all these uh, very dramatic pictures in which you see a big contraction and the woman walking there because I let them walk during the labor. I put them at the telemetry and they can walk, we have to monitor the baby, and they can walk. Right? right? So, I want to show you now a moment, and this is an, another. another and I'm sorry for the quality. the quality because somehow I don't know what happened at that time with that camera and that camera was not working properly. But that, I, I, here I bring the two um, of the pregnant girls, all right, ladies. And then I bring the husband and, and the husband will do that. Okay, but this here, now I'm going to use, they are right there. And the quick induction is simple, simple, just to touch the forehead and you see how they go, right? When you do the quick induction, it's very important. You ask, you have to ask the patient, are you ready? Because they have to give you the permission to be ready. They don't say, I'm not ready, don't do it. Because you're going to fail. Are you ready? They are ready. That's the signal. You touch it, they go, stand kind of together. Almost like an evangelist that you see in the television. Right? Yeah. Um, that's, that's what it's all about. I really don't know if these people, they prepare them before they show up there, or use for them. But still, there's a quick induction that you can do to any, to any person. Anybody, I did it many times, I did it in, in restaurants. I remember <laughs> a nephew of me, I was in Amsterdam, we were talking about it, 
we have an effect that we live there. And he was interested. I do a quick induction right there and in the restaurant. 